Hello everyone, it's the interview queen Alicia Toot here and I would like to welcome you to an interview with an absolute legend. He is not only one of the greatest guitarists of all time, um, he's also a co-founding member of one of my favorite bands of all time, Being Kiss, and he is the spaceman. Everybody, it is Ace Fraley. Hello. Hi, pleasure Hi. to be here. It is an absolute pleasure to have you on. How are you doing over there? I'm doing great. I just moved into a new home. I'm building a recording studio in the basement. Going to start working on my uh, next studio album for E1 because I just re-signed with E1 Music, which is a Canadian company. You're in Canada? I am. Good old Toronto. E1 is a Canadian company and uh, we're going to be, uh, my next album will be a studio record with originals and then we're, we're slated to do an Origins Volume 3. So that should be a lot of fun because I'm starting to get the hang of it now. Right. You know, I, I can honestly say 80 to 90% of the interviewers that have heard the new Origins Volume 2 album like it better than the first one, which is very encouraging. I just hope the fans agree. <laughs> it's interesting because I think the biggest difference from the first to the second is I know you were a little apprehensive when it was pitched to you like hey we want to do a covers album you weren't really into it at first but now second time around you can really just hear how effortlessly fun it was for you and you seem to have really enjoyed your time in the studio so just tell me a little bit about that and the differences from uh, Origins Volume 1 to Volume 2 which is coming out in just a couple yeah. of days. Because I'm a lead guitarist, I picked a lot of songs with really cool guitar riffs. You know, stuff that I used to perform in clubs when I used to play Top 40 way before I joined KISS. And, uh, you, know, you know, when I was a teenager learning how to play guitar, the whole English invasion just, uh, you know, blew me away. I mean, I never took a guitar lesson. I learned how to play guitar from Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, you know, the Beatles, the Stones, Pete Townsend of The Who. They were all major influences on me. Well, you know, I saw Led Zeppelin's first New York appearance at the Fillmore East when I was about 17. They were opening up for Iron Butterfly. And after they finished their performance, half the people left. I felt really sorry for the opener. Oh my god! The headliner, because you know who, who, who after, you know, the headliner had to play to half a house. Oh man, <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things where it's such an iconic band. Like some people think, how are you going to top that? You know, may as well just cut our losses now. But Led, Led Zeppelin was destined to take over the world, just like Kiss did for a while. You know. Absolutely. Well, when it does come to Origins Volume 2, there are so many amazing songs that you chose to cover. And just in general, there's so many great tracks out there in the world right now and from before. So is it kind of difficult for you to narrow it down to the specifics and uh, choose the ones that you ended up with for this new release? Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of interviewers have said to me, did you pick all of the songs and then decide to record them? And I said, no, I did them one at a time. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm a big fan of Humble Pie, but I could never sing like Steve Marriott. You know, I really don't even <laughs> consider myself a lead vocalist. You know, I sing out of necessity, not because uh, I love singing. Uh, I'm a guitar player, producer, songwriter first. So uh, I remember bumping into Robin Zander from Cheap Trick, who's an old friend of mine, because Cheap Trick used to open for Kiss in the 70s. Right. And Robin just did a fabulous vocal on the Humble Pie song, 30 Days in the Hole. You know, I'm old friends with Lita Ford. She came, uh, spent the weekend at my home. And, you know, I have a home studio at the time in San Diego where I recorded this record. And... Uh, she did a fantastic vocal on Jumpin' Jack Flash, you know, and it just went on and on and on and on. One day at a time, we, I sat there with my engineer figuring out what, what should we do next, you know? It's nice when things are that I, I mean, a lot of times the criteria of picking a song was, can I sing it, you know? I didn't <laughs> think I'd be able to pull off good times, bad times, because <laughs> Robert Plant has such an amazing range but uh, I had to drop my tuning down to D to sing it. But I somehow pulled it off. I was really happy with the end result. Was there one song that you really wanted to cover, but you did notice that it was like, man, I just, I just can't make that, uh, that, that register, that key up there? <laughs> no. 
I mean, that one surprised me. The Kink right. song, Lola. I got my girlfriend, Laura Cove, to sing lead vocals on that, uh, harmony, rather. And uh, my old girlfriend, Rachel, sang, uh, did the harmony when we were living in San Diego, but we broke up 15 months ago. And uh, I had Laura replace uh, her background vocals, and her vocals are actually better than Rachel's. So uh, it worked that, out. That, that was that worked out really well. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, we've been talking about covers, but when it comes to your songs, I know that a favorite that you have ever written uh, and sang on happens to be "Shock Me," uh, especially because it was not only your first lead vocal, but to this day, it's just an absolute banger of a tune. So, would you say that uh, that holds up and that's still your favorite track to date with all the recordings you've done? The the uh, Beatles song "I'm Down." You know, I didn't think I'd be able to recreate a Paul McCartney vocal, but I surprised myself again. And also with the mountain song, uh, Never In My Life. You know, Leslie West is a great vocalist and a good friend of mine. And uh, I always loved that guitar riff. And uh, that ended up, you know, sounding pretty good too. So uh, I just hope my fans really uh, like this record so far. Most of the people that have interviewed me think this is a better album than Origins Volume 1. Like I mentioned before, I think you could just feel that you were having a lot of fun with it when you were putting the record together. And it comes across, you know, you want to have fun while listening to it. You really do. I think it comes through in the tracks. I think the fact that I'm having fun, you know, when I was coaching Lita Ford on Jumpin' Jack Flash. I mean, I've known Lita since the days of the Runaways. Right. You know, the Runaways used to open up for Kiss for a few shows, and I got to know all the girls. I mean, I knew I already knew Joan Jett from Hanging Out in Manhattan, and uh, then I became friends with all the girls. I used to go out with the bass player, Jackie Fox, for a short time. And, uh, you know, Lita stayed over my house for a weekend, and I coached her for two days on that vocal, and she just killed it. You know, same thing with Robin Zander on the Humble Pie song. You know, I could never sing like Steve Marriott, but luckily Robin Zander can. And uh, <laughs> it turned out great. It's incredible hearing you talk about everyone else who happened to be, you know, pioneers in rock and roll. I mean, the Runaways are just an absolutely incredible band. And you've toured with so many great artists over the over the years. I mean, you've shared stories from awkward encounters with Prince to performing shows with Def Leppard. Um, is there anyone left for you in the world of rock and roll that you would still like to meet um, simply from just a music lover's point of view? I've met just about everybody. That's what <laughs> I I've figured. Been, I've been in this business for over 45 years. And, uh, you know, I've met most of my my idols and uh, it, it was, uh, I mean, I, I was hanging out with Pete Townsend in San Diego when the, when the Who played uh, in San Diego a year or two ago. Uh, it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm in a situation where, you know, because of Kiss of Success, I was, you know, the doors were always open. I, I could get into any concert. You know, my daughter wanted to see Hall one day, you know, uh, Kurt Cobain's wife. Yep, Courtney Love. Courtney Love. And she said, Dad, we don't have any tickets. I said, grab your girlfriend. Don't we'll worry. Down in the afternoon, I'll grab the road manager, tell him who I am. Next thing you know, we got like, you know, we're in 10th row watching uh, Courtney Love. And then after the show, Courtney Love took a liking to my daughter, Monique, and uh, was taking her around backstage Drew, at the time, Drew Barrymore was dating the bass player. So we met Drew Barrymore and, and uh, there was so many other celebrities back there. I can't even name them all. Uh, but it was a lot of fun and uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a real trip. I'm working on my second book. You know, my first book was No Regrets. Right now, the working title for my second book is No Regrets Too but that might change. I was kicking around the idea of calling my second book, Thanks for the Memories, you know. Okay. Frank Sinatra. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. I told my daughter she needs to write a book because uh, when I- How many I, stories I, must have been passed down and experienced with yeah. you? 
but you know, my daughter just turned 40 and uh, when she was in her teens, she was headed down to Manhattan going to raves and uh, hanging out with celebrities because she was my daughter. She had, you know, full access to any club. And uh, she's been telling me stories and she told me she's been keeping journals since she was 13. So uh, I told her, you know, you got to write a book, honey, because uh, you'll probably get a couple hundred thousand dollars in your pocket for doing that. Definitely a great idea. But the last thing I wanted to ask you about today happens to be a nickname that you use for almost everyone, and that is Curly. Um, I know earlier on in Kiss, you would call everyone that, and they kind of spun it back and started calling you Curly. Um, so did you have any other nicknames for the guys uh, back, in, back in Kiss? Do you have any other nicknames for one another other than just Curly? Well, you know, everybody thinks that the guys in Kiss don't get along, but, you know, we're all good friends. You know, I got Paul to sing on Fire and Water on Origins Volume 1. On my last uh, studio album, Spaceman, me and Gene wrote two songs together. He came down to my home studio in San Diego. And, uh, you know, we still keep in touch. Uh, and who knows what's going to happen in the future? You know, this pandemic has just put a halt to all live concerts. And uh, hopefully by next year, everything will just kind of fall back into place again. Uh, people, are, I heard people are doing concerts in... Uh, Cars and drive-ins. <laughs> Lots of craziness. I, I know that some people are doing concerts on Zoom, but there's also, uh, what, do you, what do you call drive-in movies. Yep. yep. You know, drive people are pulling up in their cars and watching, you know, they're setting up a stage and, and doing concerts that way. I don't know how long that's going to last, but, you know, at least you're safe from getting uh, infected, you know, by your neighbor because you're inside a car. Uh, you know, I'm just hoping and praying that, you know, by uh, the spring or summer of next year, you know, this pandemic will have uh, dissipated. And I feel like everyone, especially people who love music and entertainment, we're all just crossing our fingers that things get back to normal somehow fairly soon. But uh, hopefully sooner than later, we will see you back out there. And I just want to say thank you so, so much to Ace for taking the time to come on here. An absolute icon has been on the show. So thank you very, very much. Uh, it was my pleasure, you know, and uh, hopefully one day we'll meet in person. I definitely hope so. I'll be able to wear one of my many other shirts. <laughs> Everyone, this has been the incredible Ace Fraley. I'm the interview queen, Alicia Tooch. Be sure to check out Origins Volume 2 coming out in just a couple days. And check out aliciatooch.com for more exclusive interviews and features. Bye, everybody.